بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all your deeds in these last few days of Ramadan and that Laylatul Qadr and its rewards are bestowed upon you I'm reminded during these days of the times that I have spent in incarceration in Bagram, in Kandahar, in Guantanamo and in Belmarsh and that how in a sense we as prisoners would actually dread the coming of Ramadan. And the reason why we would do this, in a sense, would be because we'd know that we couldn't do any of those things that we do back at home. We couldn't be uh, invited to iftars, for example. Uh, we couldn't be with our families. We couldn't uh, go to the masjid to pray Salat al-Taraweeh or to pray uh, the Qiyam in the masjid the way that we do here. And even etikaf, in fact, we were just doing continuous etikaf whether it was Ramadan or not, because we were in solitary confinement cells. But it's important, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, that fasting has been prescribed upon us in order that you learn God consciousness and piety. And part of our piety was to understand and recognize that this month was a month of blessing, a month of sympathy, a month of forgiveness, a month of victory. It was the month in which the Battle of Badr, which was the most decisive battle in the history of Islam, took place. And from there, we got our courage, we got our solace, and we got our reasons to continue and to be patient. Well, because we knew that for patience and um, was something that would help us out. And as Allah says, That whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to Allah, he, uh, Allah will make a, 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 an exit for him and uh, provide for him from where he would never have imagined. And so we waited. And if there's one incident that I want to recall, it's this, that every single day, and this is in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan, there is a battle for the airwaves, if you like, in Guantanamo. And that is that on the one hand, there is the U.S. national anthem that plays precisely at sunset. Uh, and the American soldiers are required by military protocol to face the largest flag on the island that's planted in the middle, stand in uh, attention, at attention, and to raise their right hands and to salute essentially the object of their devotion. Simultaneously, the Muslims are preparing for Salat al-Makhrib. They also face the east. They raise their hands and towards the direct object of their devotion, they carry out their prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul Alameen. And this for me marks such a stark contrast and explanation of why we, the soldiers and the prisoners, the people dressed in orange or the people dressed in military combats, were there to begin with. And we understood that our goal in life was to remain true to our principles, remain true to our beliefs, remain true to our cause, remain true to all that we believed to be the right thing, no matter what the circumstance. And that was one of the lessons that I've learned from Guantanamo and Bagram and elsewhere that will stay with me for the rest of my life.